Hey guys, I want to share with you something that's really interesting that I found when I was reading Carl Jung's work. And he writes about how each of the personality types get overcome by their own ego. He writes about how the ego disrupts each of the personality types. So I noticed that when I was reading his description of the personality types, there's a certain pattern to his writing loosely. Loosely, there's a certain pattern in which he describes the process by which each type gets overcome and disrupted by their ego. So the first thing I want to let you know is that cognitive functions are the way we process and intake information. It does not represent our true selves. Our true selves go further beyond the MBTI type. So Carl Jung writes about how when the personal types get disrupted by their ego, they identify, their ego identifies the surface aspect of their personality, meaning the cognitive function in itself, resulting in a one-sidedness to the type. Each person who is overcome by their ego, they lose their sense of self. Their sense of self gets absorbed into their first function. And when that happens, he writes, this results in the repression of the fourth function or actually all the other functions. So everything is done in service of the first function when the ego takes over. The thing is, every single cognitive function has its energy and you can't make it go away. You can't just remove it from the personality. So the repression of the fourth function results in the fourth function being unconsciously expressed in an exaggerated and ugly and negative kind of fashion. And the more obsessive each type is of the first function, the more the fourth function expresses itself this way as a counter force. And the funny thing is that the more we try to obsessively express our first function, it actually fails to accomplish what the first function is trying to do. So the first function is trying to accomplish some sort of goal, but the more the first function becomes all too powerful, it kind of loses its meaningfulness. And you're going to get a sense of what I'm saying here when I describe in this video and in the next video about how all 16 of the personality types gets absorbed in their ego. In this video, I'm going to talk about eight of the types. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the other eight. And also in the second video, I'm going to talk about how you could transcend the ego of your type. So before I talk about each of the personality types here, I want to let you know that the cognitive functions are like different parts of ourselves that conflict with one another. And if you want to learn how to relieve conflict between different parts of yourself, I have created a video about that. And you can relate this video in a pretty obvious way to cognitive functions. So I have a link to that video up above and also down below in the description. I also want to let you know that I have an Instagram page and I also have a website as well with different articles on mental health. If you want to check out those, I have links to my Instagram page and my website down below in the description box. So I want to first start off with the expert sensing types, the ESTPs and also the ESFP. So Carl Jung writes on these types that when they're not falsified by the ego and their healthy expert sensing types, they're by no means gross. And they often display a lot of positive qualities. So he mentions about how every single cognitive function has its own morality, ways that it benefits and contributes to everybody else, the rest of humanity. And the benefits include being present. Expert sensing makes these types generous. They tend to have a very fine development of aesthetics and enjoyment, which they share with others. And they tend to be jovial, enduring company. So when these types become falsified by the ego, this is when they highly identify with expert sensing. They get lost into expert sensing. So he writes this, the more sensation predominates, so that the sensing subject disappears behind the sensation, the more unsatisfactory does this type become. So he's saying like when the expert sensing type fully identifies with expert sensing, losing themselves into it, and they kind of amp up that need for sensation, they actually become unsatisfied. So it's kind of like what I said earlier in this video. The more you get tied to your first function, the less you're going to meet its goals. Because the idea of sensation is to have that feeling of satisfaction 
with life. But the more they kind of pressed expert sensing in an excessive way, the less satisfied they are. The ego becomes blended into expert sensing. And as a result, Carl Jung writes, they become crude pleasure seekers, kind of like an Anna Delvey kind of person who's like could be very calculating in the way they try to manipulate others so that they could get sensory gratification. But in the end, when this type manipulates the outside world and others to meet their sensory needs, this type actually ends up being really unsatisfied. And Carl Jung writes, the more they try to identify with expert sensing and repress the rest of their psyche, the rest of their personality, then introvert intuition rebels unconsciously. And their introvert intuition creates a counterforce be that becomes very, very moral and religious. So the more there's that expert sensing side, the more the introvert intuition becomes very superstitious and anti-reality, even more so than other types. Again, I want to mention for the normal expert sensing type, they tend to have more of a healthy balance between intuition and sensing. So the normal expert sensing type is a very considered person. And as Carl Jung writes, they could keep a very good table of friends. And yes, they do make sacrifices for the sake of style, but in a way that is meaningful in terms of sensing. Because sometimes you have to make these sacrifices in order to create a very enjoyable and pleasing kind of life for yourself and also others. So stay tuned because later on, I'm going to compare expert sensing types with expert intuiting types. So next, I want to talk about the expert feeling types and what Carl Jung has to say about them. So he says when expert feeling type is normal and healthy and balanced, their thinking meaningfully compensates for their feeling. When these types do not become excessively feeling to the extent they get into a state where they're all about feelings for feeling's sake, they actually have a good balance and they're very capable of thinking. Carl Jung says that they're very capable of thinking. It's just that feeling is prioritized. And these types, of course, they could make really great hosts, motivators, and unifiers of people. So what happens when these types become falsified by the ego? So it's important to note that all functions must exist in the psyche. So if they are repressed, they're going to come out in unconscious form. So when thinking is repressed, it's going to find its way through the unconscious. So what happens is that when these types ignore thinking, then thinking takes up a very negative character. Hideous thoughts get fastened onto the people and things that are valued by feeling. This is what Carl Jung writes, that for the things and people that these types value, very much value and care about, if they ignore their thinking side, the negative thoughts are going to be fastened upon these very same people and things. And then what happens is that thinking becomes a slave to feeling. And kind of like what I mentioned before, like when the first function becomes excessive, it loses its character. So feeling, in this case, when feeling becomes about feeling for feeling's sake, and he says about this about the introvert feeling too. It loses its character. It loses its meaningfulness because things only are meaningful when they have their opposite. When feeling has the opposite thinking, then feeling becomes meaningful. But when everything's just about feeling and feeling for feeling's sake, that doesn't really give it character or real meaning behind it. And then he writes about how the self gets absorbed into that first function, that feeling function, that surface level personality. And what this leads to, this is very interesting. Carl Jung writes that when it comes to these types, they start to develop multiple personality disorder or they start to develop hysteria. These they completely lose themselves and get fastened to whatever feeling they're experiencing in the moment. So without the proper balance of thinking, what happens is that say that this type feels this way one way, and then they're going to fully express that feeling. And then they're going to really shift completely into a different kind of feeling state one moment to the next. So you could actually see a very big gap between how their personality presents. Because in, in this state, they're expressing this feeling. And in the next state, they start to become a whole different persona. When extra feeling types are healthy, thinking is dealt with consciously in order to create a coherent structure behind the personality. But if thinking is ignored, then thinking takes into the shape of negative thoughts about others. So now let's see what Carl Jung has to say about expert intuition. So when expert intuition, the ENTPs and ENFPs, when they're unfalsified by the ego, they use expert intuition in a very well-intended way. So when it's not 
focused on the ego. Expert intuition could be used to, as you say, do exceptional service as a promoter, as initiator of promising enterprises. So he talks about how expert intuitive types can be advocates for anything that has promise to it. And then they could see the potential in people and see how they could be useful. And so he says, expert intuitive types mix people and they inspire people to fulfill their potential. However, when the intuition becomes intensified and they disappear into the function, their ego gets fused with their primary function. What happens then is that they start to squander life. They chase one possibility after the other possibility and not staying with something long enough to bear fruit. So if they're healthy, they would have a good balance between extra intuition and introvert sensing, kind of sticking a bit more with a possibility to see where it goes. However, when everything's about intuition, everything starts to become about chance and possibilities and they get stuck in that realm and not really sticking with anything. And the more they identify with intuition and suppress the other facets of life, such as sensation, sensation will find a subconscious way to get into the psyche. So Carl Jung makes a very interesting comparison here between expert sensing and expert intuiting types. So what he says about these two types is that when they get too far into their primary function, whether it's expert sensing or expert intuiting, they demand freedom without any sort of restraint. When that happens, the expert sensing type starts to develop a very quasi-mystical introvert intuiting function. And when the expert intuiting type gets this way, being about freedom without restraint, they start to get really obsessed with quasi-actual things. And what Carl Jung is referring to here is introvert sensing. So introvert sensing finds a way to get in. When the extrovert intuiting type becomes obsessed with intuition, then they subconsciously and unconsciously start to become obsessed with these quasi-realistic things such as compulsions or fear of illness or phobias that they may have. And they might start to become very hair splitting, like things have to be a certain kind of specific kind of way, kind of like an unhealthy introvert sensing type, demanding that kind of precision. So what Carl Jung says about expert intuiting types, even though expert intuiting types are very developed in seeing the soul and essence behind things. When they become too much, they actually miss the soul of the object. So finally, last but not least, let's talk about the expert thinking types, ENTJs and ESTJs. So when these types are unfalsified by the ego, Carl Jung describes these types as being balanced, that a lot of expert thinking types, they create a formula for their life, but when they're balanced, that formula is not that strict and that it takes into consideration the other functions such as feeling, intuition, and sensing. So when the formula, as he says, is wide enough, is not that strict, that formula plays a very useful role, and they end up being really great innovators in society, purifiers of public conscious, and they are, also, they are also rescue workers. When these types become falsified by the ego, they reduce everything to a singular rigid formula. So they become one with the formula itself. And if that formula is rigid, they become a grumbler, a self-righteous critic, a crafty reasoner, forcing people into that formula. And you can see a little bit of that negative interfering feeling there with that self-righteous aspect of the critic. If that formula is very strict and it's devoid of feeling, what happens is that feeling cannot be destroyed. So it's going to find its way into the type. So when that happens, happens and often they create this formula in order to save the world. They want to save the world with this like very strict formula and this becomes an all-consuming need. What happens is that they will not shrink from lying or cheating for the sake of the formula and justify the means. And this is not something they want to do at all. They're not following rationale when they're lying like that. So what happens is that they lose their sense of self behind the first function. So their ego gets fused with that first function and they mistaken themselves with that first function and they've forgotten about their deeper personality and the rest of what creates a, a balanced life or a balanced sense of self. And that includes a tendency then to neglect their family, neglect their finances, their health, neglect their social position, all for the sake of this formula. And the thing is, when they become very dogmatic, it's very natural when someone becomes very dogmatic to 
harbor a secret doubt in order to compensate for that dogmatism. What's interesting here too is that when someone becomes really dogmatic, they're actually fanatic. And fanaticism is actually a negative form of introvert feeling because it's hyper passion that's going on beneath the expert thinking formula. Hey guys, so stay tuned for part two in which I talk about the other eight types and be sure to like and subscribe. And if you would like, you can check out my website, leonseltherapy.com.